Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary-Kate Carpetris, and I'm here today with Jenny K. Parks. Hi, Jenny. Hi, it's nice to be here. And um, Jenny is a designer that we worked with you a couple of times yes. already. Yes. Um, and you're here today to demonstrate... Binding. Machine binding. Machine binding. Back to front machine binding. All machine. No all hand work at all. No hand work at all. Okay, great. Well, let's yes. take a look at this. And we're talking specifically about how to prep your yes. binding. Because a lot of times in a pattern we'll say, bind your quilt to finish and we just trust that you know what that means. Right. And not everybody does. And you have some foolproof ways to really guarantee success with your machine binding, right? I do. Great. I do. I teach a lot of beginner classes. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that they struggle with. Beginners especially will struggle with it. And you know, you make a whole quill, right? You practice putting all the blocks together and trying to get everything assembled just right. And then you get to the binding and it's a, just a disaster. So I had to come up with a way. If you can see, these are samples of my front to back machine binding, all done by machine. And okay. I'm very happy with the techniques I've been able to come up with. So let me show you These why. These are really beautiful. And I just want to mention this oh, yeah. quilt here on the top here is one that I recognize because we, yes. we patterned this one. Yes. Speaking of working together and we have a kit for it, just a taste. It's an adorable quilt. So I just wanted yes. to show that one off because I love this quilt. Thank anyway, you. that's it. Okay. So this is part of my motivation for trying to come up with the binding. This quilt was also, it was featured in another book. It was featured in a book and I, all I see when I look at it is this binding mistake right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just not bad binding. That's, that's a cry for help. It's just a desperate plea to figure out some other solution. You can see- Were you on a deadline? I, of course, I of was course. on a and deadline. So that, that last thing, I, I, not that this has ever happened to me, but yes, it's just, you're on a deadline and the binding, but that's how a lot of us feel when we get exactly. to that step. It's like, oh, I just want to be done. Exactly. So I wanted to come up with ways that were going to work, that were going to be consistent, quick, beautiful, and, and I really, I really like what I've come up with. Great. All right. So okay. the first thing we're going to do is prep some fabric. Because that's, that's one of the things that we don't think about. Now, a lot of Fabric stores where you buy your fabric, they will um, cut it like with the rotary cutter mm -hmm. for you to purchase it. And what happens sometimes is see the, the manufacturing process is not gentle to fabric. No. It's very violent. Yes. And fabric can get off grain and skewed. Mm -hmm. And if we want to have nice binding, it's a good idea to have the fabric as be as on grain as possible. We want it to line up really nicely. We don't want it to be all uh, mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. which can happen. I mean, everybody's seen it where the salvage is like two inches off of where right. it should match. So I'm going to show you how to fix the binding, fix the fabric so it works best for binding. Okay. And, and it's just really nice. Now, don't be scared. I'm going to rip this fabric. Okay. But it's going to be okay. Let's see it. Well, it will survive and it'll be gorgeous for it. So what I do when I have to rip fabric, if it hasn't already been ripped at the shop, mm -hmm. I cut about an inch and a half in. On the fold? On the fold. Not on the salvage? Not on the salvage, That's no. I've I not just, seen this before. Yeah, I just cut it right there on the fold. And then, uh, yeah, my cut's about an inch deep. You mm -hmm. want to get enough to get a grip on it. Sure. And I'll buy, if I know the shop cuts with a rotary cutter, I'll buy maybe an, uh, an extra eighth of a yard or something just to accommodate any issues, yeah. but I haven't had any. And in the three years I've, I've worked at a shop that they, I've worked at both shop, both kinds of shops where they cut with a rotary cutter and where they rip. And in the years that I worked at the shop with ripping, I only had three that ever made any mistake in ripping the fabric. And that was, the fabric was already flawed to begin with. Okay. So it's, it's going to be fine. Okay. It sounds rather aggressive, but it's going to be fine. Okay. It's See, pretty satisfying, actually. It is. It is. It's really strong. <laughs> you do. I have muscles. Woohoo! Just get it out of the way. All right. And so you see along here, we have this ripped edge, and it's going to be a little frayed. Mm -hmm. So I, I will trim that off mm -hmm. just slightly, you know, so you get it in line. And then when I do that, I ignore the fold end, and I ignore the salvage end. This is my straight line. 
Uh-huh. I don't worry about where anything else is going to be. You're not like trying to make a 90 degree angle no. with lining it up. <laughs> no, on uh-uh. the corners. Okay. I don't worry about it at all. That's my straight line. That that's my golden standard. So now let me cut some of the fabric for you, and show you how I do this. And again, I teach a lot of beginners. So you come up with issues. You know, you've cut fabric, and it it will. Um, you get like a little V in it mm-hmm. or a little off shape. Mm-hmm. So what I've started doing is I cut with the fold towards me mm-hmm. so that if there is any bowing or anything wrong with the shape, it's at the end of the strip, not the middle of the strip where it's going to cause me problems. Right. I'm all about avoiding as many problems as I possibly can. So I like to cut it this way. So I've got it lined up there. Now my binding, I cut two inches wide. Okay. Because here's my thought, and I actually got kind of irritated about this, because as I was trying to figure out a good method for binding, people would say, oh, you need to cut it two and a half, and then your seam allowance needs to be three-eighths of an inch or five-eighths of an inch. You know, I am a quilter, and I know a quarter of an inch, and if I start throwing five-eighths or half an inch yeah. or something, and pe- it gets confusing. And So why can't you come up with a way to work with the quarter-inch foot? So, so that's what I did. Okay. Okay. That's foreshadow of things to come. But, all right. So I just cut two inch two wide inches. strip. Yeah. With the fold at the bottom. I'm just gonna cut one more here for you. And then you also wanna be sure, and I see this with quilters a lot, you wanna center yourself in front of where you're cutting. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't wanna be off to the side or uh, off to the other side or something like that. You want to be nice and centered so you get a good angle. And cut swiftly with the courage of your convictions that you mean for that cut to happen. It's going to happen. There's no question. No question at all. It's going to do what you want it to. All right, so now I'm just um, I'm opening up these guys, and I'm going to piece the binding. That's mm-hmm. our next step. All right, so what I do, if you can notice this, I ignore the salvages. I yes. just cut them off when we go, right? So, I mean, I don't... Some people will remove all the salvages before mm-hmm. they even start mm-hmm. sewing on a project. That's not me. That's extra work in my book. <laughs> yeah. And again, when you're at the binding, you're like, I just... I want to be done. done. I want to be done, yeah. darn it. Okay, so instead of... I could line them up, you know, very exactly, or even, you can imagine if the salvages weren't there, I could line yes. them up right there. Mm-hmm. But what I, I call that FWP fraught with peril. I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> it's going to mess up in some way or another, and, and I, I'm not doing that. A new quilting acronym. Like FWP, it. that's right. So, so I'll line it up like this, and I'll give myself a little wiggle room, a little grace in there, and then you can mark it. I've done lots of bindings, so I don't feel the need to mark it so okay. much anymore, but I'll show you how. So you can mark it. We're going to sew from the upper left to the lower right to put the binding together. So I'm just gonna draw a nice bright red line there. Mm-hmm. That should show us the direction we're gonna go. You can pin it if you want. Like I said, at this point, I don't, as little as I have to do with pins as possible. I'll right. use them if I have to. Right, but I feel like I people guess. should pin as, feel as much as, they should pin as much as they feel they have to. Right, sort of like but driving in the conditions that you feel safe in your car. You should do, you should do that same kind of thing. Now, that I mentioned cars, I want to ask you a question. How fast does your car go? No, seriously, on the speedometer, how, how fast does it say it's going to go? It says it can go up to 120. Do you drive it up to 120? Uh, no, I no, no. Except for maybe once, but we won't talk about it. <laughs> okay, we won't say anything. Um, but that's the complete capacity that your engine is equipped to do, right? Uh-huh. Okay, so if we only learn about quilting, Right? Well, okay, so if you drive it at maximum capacity all the time, your car would shimmy and shake. You wouldn't be able to hear the radio. It'd be Mm -hmm. terrible, right? Mm -hmm. And the car would not last. So you drive it at a lower speed. Well, what I wanted to do when I was figuring out all this this stuff about the binding is I wanted to think outside the box. And that's not a cliche because I hear it all the time. 
but I wanted to think outside the box and find new ways to do this. So I took information from other sources, not just quilting, of how you could make things really accurate and very nice and work. So mm -hmm. that's, that's, I'm gonna show you some of that too. But all okay. of this is attempt to think kind of outside of the box. What's gonna make the most sense? What can I explain to people who have just cut with a rotary cutter for the first time mm -hmm. and have it work, have it stick in your head? All right, so I'm gonna sew this together. I'm just gonna piece this part of the binding here. Lower the little foot. There we go. And just go across that line, upper left to lower right. Now, I want you to see this over here because for the first few times I was working on binding, somehow I managed to be using solid fabric so mm -hmm. it wouldn't have a different print on the front or the back. So I got every other one going in the opposite direction. The seams were in the opposite ways. Ah. So I, you know what I mean? I kind of got, I, I put them all on in the wrong directions, uh -huh. every other one. Uh -huh. So that was, that was a delightful day. Yes, and sure. <laughs> So I figured out, I kind of got myself in the habit there that when I make this strip, right, I need to put this strip out here and then, and then I flip it like that. Okay. So I flipped this upper edge and now this next piece of binding is ready to go yeah. to put our next strip Before you've on the even top. taken it out of the machine. Oh yeah. You're yeah. ready to go with the next one. I'm, I'm ready to put the next piece on. Yeah. And I'm going to chain piece all of this. So let me show you again here. Draw a little line. And I'm using a very bright uh, red pen. You probably wouldn't want to do that. There's all kinds of marking stuff that you want to do that you might be a little less but obvious. We're doing that just because it shows we're up. We're doing that, yes. Yeah. I want to make sure people can see. Oh, let me line that up real well. All right. Put up. And you would just continue. I would and just continue. continue to get to peace. Yes. Excellent. And I tend to really over make binding. I had an experience where I didn't have uh, <laughs> the binding that I needed. Yeah. You're getting closer and closer to the edge. No, no. Yeah. And you have to go back and do it again. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Nice. I'm not a fan of going back. Okay, so here's my strip. You can see those are just the pieces. That's just how it would look if I take it off. I'll cut apart that little piece right there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just rough cut this at this point and just get those fellas out of the way. Whoop. Yeah, that, that seam allowance doesn't need to be a perfect and exact. No, it's... no. Yeah, I like to take the time on something that needs to have a lot of time dedicated to it. If it doesn't, I don't care. I don't need to worry about it. Okay, so next we're gonna press. Okay. We're gonna deal with the pressing issue here. All right, now, so I'm going to do a double fold binding and, it, you know, um, so, so like I fold it and then we're going to put it on there. Right. The reason for doing a double fold binding is because when, when we're binding, um, uh, the binding on the quilt will probably be the thing to wear out first. Yes. If it's a double fold, it'll last a little bit longer, mm -hmm. be a little bit more sturdy. And binding's easy to replace. Especially yeah. is what I'm going to show you. Excellent. Binding <laughs> easy to do. So um, that's why I do a double fold binding. All right. So we're going to start here a little bit. And I'm going to fold it once. And then I'm not going to... Let me scooch this here a little bit over. Okay. And I'm not going to worry. I don't pull it through a special mechanism. I don't do anything like that. You know, there's like little tools that you can put on there to mm -hmm. do that. I don't do that. I don't worry about that. I don't need to. I just keep trucking on this way. I'm just going to go like this. And steam is excellent for this technique. Great. I like to use steam. I also don't, you know, some people will cut on the bias to do it, and I, I don't cut on the bias to do my bindings unless I'm making something that has really scallopy yeah. edges or something. Then I would. Then you would, and that's a whole other... That's a, that's a whole other banana. It sure We're is. not doing that one no, today. This is a nice <laughs> traditional straight binding. It is, it is. Okay, so you can see here I've come to this intersection, and I'm just going to kind of ignore it and fold okay. down. You don't press them open. I don't, you don't no. worry about it. You nope. Just, great. 
Well, because you think about it, you know, if I've got five yards of binding to press, I'm not going to be, okay, open that up. Yeah, and it really doesn't create Fold that much Fold it bulk. back down. No, it really doesn't. So I just kind of let it fold over the way it wants to, however it's going to be happy mm -hmm. with, and press it. And keep moving along. Now, when I'm actually piecing the binding on there, if the dog ears are hanging off, if that's going to be too much and if they're in the way, I'll clip them. If they're okay. not, I just don't worry about it. Okay, because they're going to be hidden. Exactly. And they're going to be hidden. Exactly. Right, spend the time where it's going to be important. It's going to be important to see. Okay, so this is one of my outside of the box moments. Okay. If you've ever sewn a garment or like hemmed a pair of pants or something, the first thing it'll tell you is like fold up the hem, maybe a half an inch and press. Then fold it again and press it again. Yes. But why pressing two times? Well, because the the um, the first press kind of tells it where you want it to go, or kind of tucks in what you need to tuck in. Yeah. And the second press tells it, you know, reaffirms that that's where I want it to stay. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a way of marking it because mm -hmm. sometimes you press it, unfold, and do some other things, and then fold it back up and sew it. So it, I see it kind of as a marking tool, and that's what we're going to do here. Okay. We're going to conform it. I am going to press it. I'm going to fold it down. I'm going to press one more time. All right. And it's going to create sort of a little xylophone look. But what this does, and I think it's really awesome, what this does is it's going to snuggle in right around the quilt. You can see how Got it folds it. in? Mm -hmm. The quilt's going to fit right in there. So when you put it on there and you fold it over and pull it to the back, or mm -hmm. you won't pull it too much to the back, you won't pull it too much to the front. It'll be nice and even because that's where you told it it wants to go Fantastic. and that's where it's going to stay. Fantastic. So these three things, these, you know, the cutting and the piecing and the pressing, if you just put those three into action, they're going to improve your bindings right away. So there Fantastic. it is. That's how it should look when it's when it's all pressed and ready to go. Ready to go. And I've got a lot more, I got a lot more well, tricks you, to share. This is just getting started. Right, so this is ready to, to put on the quilt. This now, is you did ready a, to go And you did a quilt. webinar. Yes. That shows the entire process. Yes. That talks about the entire process. Yes. Yeah. So if people are interested for what, you know, your next steps, then they can research that webinar. But at least Absolutely. with this, people have some really great tips to do their machine finished bindings. Yes, to get you started. Thank you so much for showing these Thank to us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. We hope that this was helpful and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.